As much as I want to help Jake and Chris, I just can't leave the tower unattended. If I do that, there's another 800 metres of the beach that's going to be unpatrolled. I quickly realised that it was too much for him to handle, so I would called Yates in and I went in as well because someone was going to drown. 3.30 in the afternoon and Backpacker's Rip is swallowing any swimmer who gets too close to its jaws. When I looked out and I saw two swimmers very quickly getting into trouble pretty close in and then a bit further out there were another two, so that's when we had to make a decision. I'm there by myself. Uh, calling Mario in. And then Yatesy had to come for help as well. A little bit further south. Come in, come in there, yeah. When I got there, they, they were in pretty bad conditions and the water was moving so much. The waves were breaking even in shallow water like pretty badly. was pretty hard, I remember the first one I got in, it was a girl, she started hugging me so strong, she was so scared, she was going fully under. Riding a 400 kilo jet ski amongst swimmers and waves takes special skill and raw nerves. So I had to turn around, the waves stopped breaking in front of me and I was on the side a bit, I was trying to do the best. Hit by a wave side on and the jet ski will roll. A badly timed pull of the accelerator and Mario could run over someone he's trying to rescue. I quickly realised that it was too much for him to handle, so I called Yates in and I went in as well because someone was going to drown. <laughs> Yates and I were whistling. It wasn't something planned. It was just it was just an instinct because we were trying to get their attention. It sounded like we were hurting dogs, but we were just trying to get the guys safe. Three lifeguards, two rescue boards, and one jet ski. Yet the situation is quickly getting out of control. So I get out to Mario and they're all clamoring all over the ski. There's three or four of them and it's happened before, you know, people just, they're so desperate they just jump on. They're in danger of really tipping the ski over and if the ski goes over in that environment, it's not ideal. This girl is hanging on to the back of the mat and I have to prise her fingers off the mat to get her onto my board. It's kind of organised chaos. All four swimmers are accounted for, but they're not back to safety yet. In that sort of state, you've really got to calm them down because they're, they're hindrance, not only to, to you, but to themselves. You know, they're endangering themselves. If I wasn't there within a couple of seconds, it could have turned nasty. The waves just took us from underneath, and then the next minute, I was just getting swept out and just couldn't even swim back. It was that powerful. There's nothing worse than feeling helpless, like there's nothing you can do. I couldn't get a breath in, and then I saw another wave come in, so, you know, I was struggling for a lot of air, but um, yeah, we just got swept out really quick. I was quite surprised how quickly. I'm quite a strong swimmer, I think, but it's really hard to get back, man. It was just a nightmare. Like, for the guy who was driving the jet ski, he could have easily, like, been in jeopardy, like, gotten caught under one of the waves, the jet ski crashed over, like, it's not an easy job. They put their lives in danger for us. The backpacker's holiday hasn't come to a tragic end. Mario is very happy. Didn't lose anyone. I did my best. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. I looked down and spotted another group of about five people in the other rip. Yeah, two more on this other rip, but... Without backup, lifeguards will be outnumbered. Over the swells, I could, I could see someone. It was a few surfers. I don't know, and I keep on second guessing myself. Are there two heads? Whip it. Are there two heads off that back and that rip in that corner? You want to get another board? Just grab another board. I don't know how he did it. We're all tired, but he spotted it like a yeah, little you genius. Drive, you drive. I've got it. I've got it. You drive. The distance from the tower to the south corner is 500 metres. Yeah, whip it to boys in the rhino. You're going to just go. Definitely one, probably. Might as well both go. There's three of them out there. Yeah, copy me. How's it going? The swimmers have drifted 200 metres offshore. Harrison and Ryan 
dig deep for the paddle. It was a really long paddle out, and I kept on looking up, and I felt like I wasn't even halfway yet. I had to put my head down, just keep paddling, keep paddling. You're flying down there, you know, they're seeing all these different people drowning, and you've got to make a decision, who do I need to go to first? And it does get the heart rate up. It just seems like people just pick when we're leaving. Oh, okay, lifeguards are leaving now, and now's a good time to drown. Yeah, it is a little bit frustrating, but um, I mean, we're lifeguards. We're not going to let someone drown, even if we are off the clock. You're sweet. If I put him on the board, you're sweet. I got this patient. I did offer him the lift, and I said, oh, you know, we'll get a wave. You want to jump on and get a wave? Oh, yeah, man. <laughs> he was like, yeah, like, let's get a wave. And he was pumped, and I was so <laughs> he got, got more than he bargained for, I think. Okay. As they move into the impact zone, Harrison and Ryan must avoid getting hit by a looming set. A little bit of experience came into play on the way back in and Harrison nailed it like a seasoned veteran and Ryan got smashed like a rookie. No. He's in the barrel. <laughs> in front of all the guys, you want to impress them and all that, and definitely one of the things not to do is um, no stop with a patient, that's for sure. That's all good, just keep going that way, towards that way. With the only available buggy at South Bondi, Whippet spots more people in trouble at the middle of the beach. I looked down and spotted another group of about five people in the other rip. Yeah, two more on this other rip, but... Without backup, lifeguards will be outnumbered. Harrison and Ryan were trying to get them on the radio, and uh, in the end, it was just up to me and Jess. Almost all of the rescue equipment is packed away, so lifeguards must improvise. We just had to run downstairs, take some boards off the racks, and pin it. Go, boss. So I got back to shore. I heard radio chat going non-stop. Ryan, get on the back. And I just knew. I said, Ryan, just screen Ryan, get on the buggy. Let's just go. We've got to go backpackers. They came from one side, me and Jess were coming, so in the end there was four lifeguards on boards, which is pretty rare, but it was after closing time, so there was, you know, we are all in the one spot. After doing a massive paddle in the south corner, then having to go full full speed out for this group, I just gave up. Put my head on the board. I was like, "Oh, no more." Please, no more swimming. Come back tomorrow. This has just been one heck of a finish to an afternoon. We would have had guaranteed multiple deaths right now. If we'd gone like when we were supposed to have left, they were gone. So, uh, yeah, I think the boys have really earned what they keep today, and I think we're all pretty exhausted, so time for a nice cold beer in the shower, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm proud of the boys. You know, they're back and forth, back and forth, trying to pack all the gear up and in between doing rescues, so it's a part of the job, and it's something they've uh, learned to do, and they do it very well. So just when we think we're all done and dusted, the boys have rescued two, we've just rescued another five. We're that close to a beer in the shower. Jesse's on again. I've seen a guy like 300 metres. Oh, yeah. Further out. And like, obviously I can back myself, but I just, you know, I know how fit Ryan is. I was like, brother, you're coming with me, mate. Let's go. <laughs> In the fading light, Jesse struggles for a visual. Well, yeah, both paddled out and he was so far out. And actually, it was the same bloke I'd rescued about 15 minutes earlier that wanted to get a wave. The man got dumped by Ryan earlier. Now on board with Jesse, he gets a second chance at catching a wave at Bondi.
you got to stand up and absolutely stoked about it. And yeah, obviously he can go home from Bondo with a smile on his face. When someone's standing on the front of your board, it's good for the boys to have a laugh at. 10 after hours rescues in less than 10 minutes. Lifeguards finally get to call it a day. Just when it feels like the situation is in hand, lifeguards are alerted to a new emergency. Are you putting your, is that a shark alarm? Professional lifeguards patrol Bondi 365 days a year. On weekends in the busy summer months, volunteer lifesavers also patrol the beach. The clubbies are invaluable. You can't say no to 40 extra lifesavers on a beach. It's an invaluable resource. Chris is monitoring the north end when a problem develops further up the beach. Hey, mate, Chris, if you could just come down to two heads just sort of midway out. All of a sudden, the uh, north side really started pulling. You know, the change of tides, it was getting deeper. Guys, I need you to come back to waist step. Chris leaves volunteer lifesavers to manage the situation. Suddenly, more and more people are in trouble. Yeah, it's your attention, swimmers. Um, they get us to go in. So we've got a board coming to help you now. Stay afloat, and if you can, come back to waist step. Water. Tom is quickly overwhelmed. I had probably three or four on the front of my board, followed by a number of other people out in the water who were able to help. The temptation is to run in, but Chris wisely manages the situation from shore. We had to ask the clubbies to help us out. Just saying there were three clubbies in the board. There would have been 10 boards at least, you know. We had guys, just surf club guys who were training, helping us out. Tom prioritises the worst swimmers. Straight to those guys there, please. Those three there. Over to your right. Eventually, more firepower is needed. Tom's out there, mate. I think he's calling you in. With no board around, I had to grab a lifesaver's board. So I grabbed that and went on out. Yeah, Chris is on a clubby board. Tom risks being overwhelmed by panicked swimmers. Can you let go, please? Uh, Chris, Chris, can you take this guy? Lifeguards and volunteer surf club members work side by side to stabilise the situation. Oh, the boys have got it under control down there now. They just all sort of went in at, at once. Just when it feels like the situation is in hand, lifeguards are alerted to a new emergency. Are you putting your... Is that a shark alarm? Yeah, um, I thought, Jake, I just heard the shark alarm. Yeah. Alarm, what are you... Shark alarm, oh, no, I just what are you guys doing down there? In extreme and very rare circumstances, the shark alarm will be used to clear swimmers from the water. We know that as trained lifeguards, that means mass rescue, but the general public think it's a shark. None of them know it's a mass rescue. The alarm has been sounded by volunteer lifesavers. The lifeguards, who have duty of care at Bondi, weren't given prior warning. Before you guys do that, you've got to tell us. Because I know, I know what you're trying to do, but it does, it just causes panic. We've got it under control now, and our thanks to everyone that's involved, but as soon as people start hearing the shark alarm, like, it, look, we've got surfers and everyone paddling in now, so it's just, it, it makes matters worse. There was really no need for it, and half the people thought there was a shark. The result is what matters, and a combined effort by lifeguards and volunteers has saved dozens of lives. With the change of tide, there was enough pull where if you weren't a strong swimmer, you would get pulled off. And once people lose their footing, they start panicking a little bit. And when people really panic, then you can, they can drown in, in bathtubs. So you've got to be right on top of it. But now the man's daughter enters the water. Well away from the safety of the flags, a group of tourists have ventured into the notorious Backpackers Rip. Central Black Rhino. Ah, uh, boy, it's pretty bad. Looks like a little Indian family. The mother's standing on the shore now. They've just walked straight into that rip. It's the worst spot on the beach. The kid's only tiny. Out of his depth, a young boy is pounded by breaking waves. Oh, 
Chapo bolts past the boy's distressed mother. A novice surfer tries to reach the boy. Now, it's a double rescue. The boy's father is also in trouble. As the surfer reaches the boy, Chapo reassures his father. I think the kids jumped in and he started getting taken out. I think the father and, and that realised he was in trouble, so what they've done, they've jumped in to try and help and they've obviously got themselves in trouble as well. Chapo signals to Jake to bring in the boy. But now, the man's daughter enters the water. He doesn't want her to experience the same terror. <laughs> the Sholapur family from Mumbai are on the last day of a three-week holiday. A last swim for eight-year-old Ariane nearly cost he and his father their lives. It's okay. I saw your son from up there. And that's why we're here. Don't I'm scream just... at us. I know. We, that's why we're here, okay? Thank you. Safely back on shore, Dunstan gives the family a quick lecture in Surf Safety 101. You can't just jump in where you want, right? You have to ask questions, look yeah. at the signs. Sure, sure. You guys swam right in front of that yellow sign, which has a no swimming symbol on it. I was going in. Uh, and many waves came at a time, so then I I got drowned and I was pedaling, so then I didn't go inside the water. I just heard the scream and then we were following him from there. And I just saw him, just his head is showing up, up and down, up and down, but he's just not able to come out, you know, from this side. He's just going in and in. Thanks, guys. Thanks. As much as I want to help Jake and Chris, I just can't leave the tower unattended. If I do that, there's another 800 metres of the beach that's going to be unpatrolled. It's mid-afternoon, and two lifeguards, Jake and Chris, are patrolling the beach. Jesse is alone in the tower. The golden rule is never, ever, ever leave the tower unattended. We always need someone watching the water. Jesse spots a group of swimmers getting into trouble at the north end. The guy that's stuck out the back can actually swim. It's just this rip. He's uh, really, really strong. Yeah, boys, uh, he's going to have to go straight in. Chris and Jake have to rescue a girl and two guys. The thing that scared me the most was that it was such a short period swell, which means that the waves are constantly breaking after each other. So you don't really have time if you roll to get ready again, because the next wave's already going to hit you. Jake reaches the girl but is pushed back. Chris makes it through to the other two swimmers, the teenager and an older man. Jake has the girl, but fights the waves. This is going to be the hardest thing now, getting them back in, because the rip's so strong, it's going to suck them out the back. Even if you're the best lifeguard in the world, if a three-foot wave hits you for patient on, you're falling off. As much as I want to help Jake and Chris, I just can't leave the tower unattended. If I do that, there's another 800 metres of the beach that's going to be unpatrolled. Chris gets his two patients to safety, but learns of a fourth swimmer in trouble. Another one. Jake, you need more? You need more? And then I've seen Chris grab another guy. Then, Jesse spots yet another person in trouble, a fifth swimmer further up the beach. Both available lifeguards can't be contacted in the water. What do I do, you know? I can't leave the tower. 
this guy out here. I just don't want to take my eyes off this guy out the back. Jesse has to find a solution to his dilemma, or this man could drown. And then, out of nowhere, I just thought, you know, Hoppo's across the road. Head lifeguard Hoppo is in his office just behind the tower in the Bondi Pavilion. Hey, uh, Hop, are you across the road, mate? I might uh, need someone just to come to the tower. I might need to go down and help the boys here. Hey, mate, I'll uh, pop it. Jesse has to cover 400 metres in the buggy. I was trying to start it, and I knew people were drowning, and it wouldn't start. And then all of a sudden, it just started, and I just pinned it, not even noticing how fast I got. Another one falling off the bank that Jesse's got gone in for. Moments before Jesse reaches the patient, a pair of experienced body surfers hold the swimmer up. These things happen. You get two or three go at the same time makes it a bit more difficult. All five swimmers are accounted for. <laughs> Thank you. 17 year olds Jai and Natasha are on holiday from Melbourne. Just too strong today. Yeah, it was just really rough, I think. Too just, rough today. Yeah, yeah, a bit hard. And we're pretty confident swimmers, so thank God they were there. Though. That's awesome. <laughs> it is a good feeling when you save someone's life, but when you save someone's life and they come up and thank you, it's an even better feeling.